Good day. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about um, how we tackle climate change in Ireland. Um, and I will draw on some of the conclusions from the annual re review report published by the Climate Change Advisory Council, of which I'm chairman, um, uh, at the end of September. I first of all want to say something on the record, then I want to look at the challenges which we all face and the policies for making it happen, both on an adaptation to climate change, which people don't tend to talk enough about, and about halting climate change itself. And I show here the path of carbon dioxide emissions going back to 1960, and it was very closely related to national income up to the middle 1990s, and since then it's diverged. But <clears throat> it hasn't diverged enough. Um, as you will see at the end of that period, emissions were rising again after the financial crisis. So we haven't broken the link. So if we continue to grow in the future, we have to find a way of decarbonizing Ireland. And I show here the emissions in 2018, the latest year we have full figures for. There was a 10% reduction in uh, emissions from the cell electricity sector because Money Point was partly closed. Um, but there were significant increases in residential, in agriculture and transport sectors. So until now, we've been heading in the wrong direction. And the question is, how can we turn this round? Um, the Climate Action Plan published last year was a major uh, w uh, uh, improvement or way for showing us the way forward. Um, it, uh, it, 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 I show in this graph here, before the Climate Action Plan was introduced, we, emissions were going to rise slightly and then come down a little by 2030, but really we were in the wrong place. With the plan, um, emissions will come down, um, um, uh, as I show there. But we actually need to do more, and I think that if we if we uh, do the right things in agriculture and in terms of changing land use, um, we, the lessons we have learned, uh, we can achieve the targets to 2030. But of course, um, the current national position is. Uh, 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 until the legislation is, it, it goes through the doll, an 80% reduction by 2050. Um, the proposed government objective um, now is net zero, zero emissions by 2050, which is I think appropriate and would be consistent with the EU's um, own um, uh, increasing ambition. In order to do this, we need additional policy measures um, to those which were in the Climate Action Plan um, uh, published last year. And I show here, um, the Climate Action Plan would put us broadly on a path to decarbon to get emissions down to 80% by 2050. We first of all want to increase the ambition and get to net zero. And also the Climate Action Plan uh, measures um, need to be supplemented to, to make emissions fall after 2030. Because I show here um, the kind of, uh, 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 without further um, policy measures. Um, uh, it, it, we may meet our 2030 target, but we won't meet the 2050 target. So the challenge, um, the, the 2019 Climate Action Plan was a major leap forward, but the government wants to increase um, its ambition um, and our ambition uh, in terms of targets for 2030 and 2050. But the first task is to implement the measures and to realise the plan. Um, more ambition means additional measures are needed over and above what are in the plan. And basically, we need change in behavior in all sectors. And the thing I want to uh, highlight here is adaptation is, if you like, the forgotten child. Even if the world uh, takes major action today, the climate is going to continue to change out to 20, uh, uh, 2050. And actually, sea level rise will continue into the next century, um, uh, no matter what we do. So we have to plan for climate change and adapt to, 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 to what is inevitable. Um, the EU climate plan published in September um, plans for net zero emissions in the EU by 2050 and tougher targets for 2030. And major changes in EU policy measures, which will, I think, be helpful in helping us to meet the targets that we want to set ourselves, which may be um, more ambitious in certain regard than uh, the EU's targets. And if accepted, um, it, it, the EU plan would really change the policy challenge for Ireland and actually make it, I won't say easy, but uh, facilitate it. Ireland must build on its adaptation planning with action. Efforts are, must be made to fill gaps in, for example, in housing and planning. And the financial sector in Ireland must understand and assess and communicate because actually insurance, if, the, if a local authority does major work, 
to make uh, somewhere more flood resistant. That should be reflected insurance premia. So I think we need uh, all hands on deck to, 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 uh, to uh, prepare for the climate change that's coming. And um, we need to assess the prioritized investment needed and we need a budget. And there are wide ranging implications. For example, flooding, we've seen flooding continuing in Cork. Um, we need action to check to, and it's going to get worse in our cities in Cork, Dublin, Limerick, and Galway. Um, so heat waves, um, they're going to become more frequent. So old people's homes, uh, hospitals, are they uh, able to deal with heat waves? And um, we don't want to cook uh, 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 the elderly like myself in heat waves. There are health effects. Global warming could be worse than expected. So the sea level rise could be even worse. So we need to take this into account when we're planning on measures to deal with coastal flooding. Key messages um, from the council. Um, we need to price damaging the environment. Um, doing the right thing must be profitable, and that is why we need the tax. Um, the carbon tax should rise as planned in, the, in committed by the government of the budget to 100 euros a ton by 2030. Already this year, actually, there are fuel prices, even after the increase in the budget in the carbon tax, are much lower than they were this time last year. Um, and that's going to lead to higher emissions. So unless we get the price right, we're not going to change. We're not going to just change because the price is right. We need other measures. And some of the revenue needs to be used as in the current budget to, to deal with the problem that low income households um, spend a higher share of the budget on, on energy and they need to be protected. So that is an important part because if the if policy measures to tackle climate change are not seen to be fair, they won't work and won't be accepted. So using some of the revenue to deal with, uh, uh, to make sure that the, the changes are fair is important. Electricity, we need to accelerate the closure of coal and peat fire generation. There are new opportunities opening up in terms of offshore wind. Um, we need to invest in the necessary infrastructure, and that's the wires to support the goals of renewable electricity. Um, um, if we're going to electrify transport and heating, um, we need um, the wires to get the electricity to, from where it's generated to our houses. Um, so that is going to be important. Also, we're emphasizing, um, a, a, as I will come on to, um, targeting rural areas first in certain cases, because bigger gains for rural households are possible from retrofitting electric cars than in urban households. And the electricity system must support that. And we need other changes, which I won't go into here, increased interconnection with, uh, with the rest of Europe, and also hydrogen is a coming fuel and using waste electricity where the wind blows and we cannot use it to make hydrogen could well be part of the solution. Transport. The target for electric vehicles in the Climate Action Plan is very demanding and it, it, it could be exceptionally expensive for the state. Um, uh, the Department of Finance has published papers on this. So we need to use taxation as well as subsidies and the changes in the registration tax in the budget is a beginning. We need to prioritize drivers with high usage because they can save more. So people in rural areas tend to drive further so they can make bigger savings. So over the coming decade, um, insofar as one can target it, um, encouraging people in rural areas to save more, who can save more to take up electric cars is important. And we need action, other forms of transport. Um, better planned development, living, uh, we're going to build maybe 50% more houses over the coming 30 years, hopefully we will. It's where they're, they need to be built in the right place um, and they need to be a, a much denser development and development that makes public transport and active transport modes possible. And we need to invest in public transport. This is vital if we're going to decarbonize. So Bus Connects is a beginning, but some of the investment we need in public transport in say, uh, 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 expansion of the DART system, uh, Lewis and Cork and so on, things like that, they will actually only benefit us after 2030. But if we don't do it now, we're not going to decarbonize by 2050. So we need to start on that now. Key messages on the built environment. Major retrofitting of existing homes is going to be very difficult, the challenge there, because resources are limited and because their builders don't, we're going to be short on builders um, because we want to build a load of houses as well. And what we've suggested is you target buildings where the most benefit 
in, in terms of emissions reduction can be achieved and also social benefits. So social housing, the state is the largest landlord in the country. It has the duty to actually upgrade its dwellings, begin there, and the budget actually suggested um, uh, has provided more funding for this. Homes currently heat, heated by coal, peat or oil, which tend to be in rural areas. If you can switch them to um, heat, heat uh, sort of to uh, uh, electric heating um, in terms of um, uh, 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 new technologies, you'll make a much bigger saving than if you switch people who are on gas, who tend to be in urban areas. So once again, helping r rural households to make the change could be good for rural households, improve their health, reduce their energy costs in the long run and um, reduce, give you a bigger bang for your buck in terms of reducing emissions. Um, high rates of retrofit cannot be achieved without unlocking low cost finance um, for households. And also we need to uh, do, like if the local authorities do it in all their houses in an estate, it's much more efficient than doing it um, on a house by house basis. Uh, so learning in that area is important. And finally, hydrogen may be part of the long term solution, replacing um, the natural gas in the pipeline. Um, because hydrogen, if it's produced in a green way, um, um, will not be adding to uh, global carbon emissions. In terms of agriculture, agriculture can both reduce emissions and enhance farm income and security. Agriculture faces a big shock from Brexit. Um, in certain areas, say like beef farming, they don't make money now and they're going to be losing more money after uh, 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 come the 1st of January, thanks to Brexit. However, farmers by shifting to other, say, using some of their land to grow trees, uh, biomass, other, they could actually make more money the money, their income would be more secure and you would reduce emissions um, of methane um, uh, 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 from, uh, from livestock. Um, the cap should, uh, which is going to be reformed, should incentivize farmers to reduce emissions, including through, through reduced cattle numbers. Um, the council recommends that farmers should be rewarded for capturing farmers. Uh, it, it is valuable to us in Ireland to the world that farmers capture carbon through woodland um, uh, biomass um, and managing the soil and, um, uh, 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 to capture more carbon. So we need to actually encourage them by, uh, 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 they will earn more if they do it, if we reform the cap. And the government needs to introduce measures to significantly reduce nitrogen use, um, which is um, actually, it's not just um, uh, contributing to global warming, but it is also the runoff and the damage done to our water courses is very significant. So there's a, there, there, are, there are multiple gains in the agricultural area where we can reconfigure the system. So farmers will be have a more secure and better income. Um, global warming will be slowed and stopped. Um, and um, uh, the emissions and damage done in terms of the water courses, in terms of increased biodiversity. So there are multiple gains if we get this right. In conclusion, the increased ambition to tackle climate change must be matched by implementation of new measures to drive decarbonisation. EU, EU proposals could be a game changer in this regard because actually the proposals which they're making could actually make it easier for us to meet our targets um, and it would give a guarantee that the EU as a whole will meet its targets for 20, increased to, uh, ambition for 2030 and 2050. And finally, integrating just what people call just transition to climate policy can add depth and assure public support for action. Because if the policies are not seen to be fair, if they're not seen to protect those on low incomes, they're not going to be accepted by, uh, by the Oireachtas, by Irish people. So I think um, there are win-wins here where those on uh, low incomes could be better off, warmer, more comfortable, and the climate, we could halt climate change if we get the policy framework right. So thank you very much. Um, and I know we will be discussing this after this. Thank you.